and will be a two-hour premiere show. Would you welcome Michael Landon? I told you I had a sport coat. Yeah, you <laughs> pulled out the A wardrobe tonight, huh? Oh, fantastic. You always wear boots. They're comfortable, aren't they, when you get used to them? Well, I've been wearing them for... Yeah. Doing television series for 22 years with boots on, so... Yeah, but did you wear them before that? Lots of guys do. No. No, just... You need them when you're out there with the horses. <laughs> right. It keeps your cuffs out. <laughs> yeah. Of course. Do you does. love the World Series? Oh, yeah. I, no, I tell you, I didn't. I thought the last game was really... I mean, I'm glad to see the Dodgers win. I thought the last game was kind of a bore, to tell you the truth. Did you see Yankee Stadium? Well, that half of the, the 90% of the crowd had left before. Okay, the but boost. that's what bothers me. Now, to, to be very they honest. They were leaving by the sixth inning. George Steinbrenner writes a letter of apology to the people of New York City for a team that has won two playoffs, gotten up to the World Series, given these people all of that entertainment, and he writes them a letter of apology. Look, I think the apology should come from the fans in the city of New York who walked out of a ball game, 36,000 people walk out. By the, before the seventh inning. Before the seventh inning, before the seventh inning, they walk yeah. out, there's 20,000 people left. And I think they owe the players, the yeah. Yanks, I think they owe them an apology. Well, as you know, ball games have been won in the last couple of innings by a lot of runs before. Yeah, but how do you, how do you get yeah. hyped? I mean, yeah. let's face it, the home team advantage is showed all the way through and everybody why, walks out. I don't know why Stein. I mean, if you lose, you give him a standing ovation at the end and say, thank you guys for one heck of a season. Yeah, I don't know why Steinbrenner wrote that letter anyway. As Reggie Jackson said, look, we didn't lose, the Dodgers won it. That's right. We did our best. We had a bad... Uh, Absolutely. We had a bad couple of nights. Absolutely. Anybody can... Uh, in professional athletics, you can have a great day the next day. It's the same guy and something happens and they just were on a, a bad roll there. That's right. Speaking of apologies, John. What, what now? I'm sorry, but... I know it's a minor thing. Well... But I must get it off my chest. In this week's... Are the press picking on you again? Oh, now? no. It, it's not that bad. But it's just that it bothers me. In this week's TV guide, there was an article, and the, the article states, once salaries are settled, Hollywood stars play touchy and expensive ego games to see who has oh, the most clout by that. a man named Andy Meisler. Andy, I know you're a small writer and can't get into a studio to find out what's going on, but I'm going to give you a pass to MGM. Because you made a statement in here, Andy, another mandate is that every top-billed performer worth his or her salt have an on-location motorhome. The current standard of the industry, occupied by the likes of Stephanie Powers, Michael Landon, and the now-departed Charlie's Angels, is a 33 to 35-footer equipped with color TV, air conditioning, microwave oven, bathtub, wet bar, and stereo. Andy, you gotta come out and see where I change my clothes. I change my clothes in a little tiny room it's the same size room as everybody else changes in, whether they be a day player or an extra. Andy, get into a studio sometime. Ask TV Guy to get you a pass. You can find out what show business is about. <laughs> and furthermore, John... Can't, can't you step out in the front porch of the little house and do that? <laughs> Why don't you just come out on, you know, on the front porch, just right in the middle of your show and stop and then go right back John, to the character. John, we've been on for eight years without a shovel. There's that's, a mess in front of the right. house right now. So there, Andy, and that goes right. for your cat, too. Yes. You don't have a big home, huh? Hmm? You don't have a big trailer home? I don't have a motor home. I got a little tiny dressing room like everybody else Not says. tiny. Come on, now. What do you mean, not tiny? Well, It I doesn't mean. get any smaller. You been in a honey wagon? You know what a honey wagon is? <laughs> Crude, isn't it? Okay, that's where I change my clothes. I'm in the same kind of room everybody else is. You open the door, you rearrange the furniture. I got a big room here. <laughs> and, I and I don't care if Andy knows it. Really big. <laughs> you gotta wear eight... boots in that room. That's too. right. <laughs> Throw out six people to get that room. <laughs> no, I don't. I have a, just a, a comfortable yeah. little. That's right. It's just plain f formica. Yeah. Formica. No. <laughs> Oh, no, it's your room. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll be right back after here to beat the press. <laughs> All right, you read something. 
Since you have a surprise, my secretary, Drew, brought this down. Apparently, this just came in this week. And, uh... Do I hear something buzzing? Yes. Okay. It says, uh, Dear Mr. Carson, I was... Do you remember somebody by the name of John Lovelace? John Lovelace. Okay. I was wondering if you could help me... Help me. Back in the ni mid-1950s, Michael Landon was my swim instructor at the YMCA here in Santa Barbara. One day in swim class, he pulled me out of the deep end of the pool, <laughs> and I never got a chance to thank him. True. That's incredible. By the way, I don't think he'd be able to pull me out of the pool anymore. I weigh 320 pounds. <laughs> Do you remember that? Incident? Do I remember? Tell I, I, I think we talked about it at one time, years and years ago. Well, this guy... I was a swimming instructor in Santa Barbara, and the reason it happened was I had a scholarship to school there, thought I had a job when I came to California. I was a, just right. a kid, 17 out of school. And there was no job, and I was starving to death. And I was sleeping in the bathroom at the junior college in Santa Barbara, and a guy came in and said, you all right? I said, oh, I'm just a little bit hungry. And I had a scholarship, an athletic scholarship, so he said, uh, would you like to be a swimming instructor? He just figured I was an athlete and I could do it. He said, do you have your life saving? I said, yeah, I didn't bring any of that stuff from Jersey. I couldn't swim a stroke. I was oh, terrified of water. And this is the kid <laughs> who, darn little rat, he jumped into the deep end while I was, te I could stand in shallow water and help these little kids, but I couldn't swim. He jumped in the deep water and all the mothers are up in the stands watching their kids. And I ran down the edge of the pool and I thought, this is it, I'm gonna die. <laughs> and I took a breath and jumped in the pool because I couldn't swim and hit the bottom and started bouncing. And I'm reaching up trying to find this kid. And I finally got a hold of him and I bounced him to the Back side to of the pool and handed him to the head instructor, a guy named Holly Eccles. The old bounce technique of life-saving. And I jumped out of the pool, and I got a standing ovation from the mothers. And the mothers all said to me, oh, most of the guys swim over and grab him by the neck and do all this. You were so cute with it. I said, well, I tried to make it happen. <laughs> it's true. That's a true well, anyway, story. John Lovelace, a little tardy thanks you Boy, for that. Be a slow bounce but now. But you're not going to bounce him. He'll bounce <laughs> you out of the pool. Anyway, we got a film clip here about the new show that stars Father Murphy. Right. Starling Merlin, Merlin Olson. Merlin Olson who's a good actor. Right, in this particular clip, I think we're gonna see, it's uh, Merlin and another one of the stars of the show, a uh, very talented young kid named Timmy Gibbs. Right. Okay, just watch it. This is a little uh, preview of uh, Father Murphy. Mr. Murphy? Yeah. Uh, you'll never know. You'll have to watch and find out. <laughs> Well, he's a good actor. That's a nice little scene. So we have to find out. When does that show start now? Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Eight o'clock. On NBC. Wish you much success with it. Thank you. You, oh, something I was going to ask you, but Freddie's giving me a cue that we don't want. You, every time you come on, you have a movie that you're going to get me in, because I asked you one night if you had something I could, I could do, and you came up with a couple of silly plots. Well, John, I've been wrong. I just haven't put the, uh, the things together. I think oh. the, the, the shows that are hits, uh, medical shows, uh, period yeah. pieces like this, yeah. frontier days, and religious kind of a thing. Right. And uh, I've got a thing for you called uh, Rabbi Johnny. Rabbi Johnny. <laughs> Great casting. Uh, Ed, you're in it. I'm in it, yes. You, you are McMahon the Moyle. <laughs> and you travel throughout the West in the 1870s doing circumcisions. <laughs> Ed only has the one line in the show. He says it in every show. We'll cut him off at the pass. Uh, I don't think I want to hear any more of this. Okay. I don't think I want to hear any more of this and, uh, with, at all.